<laughs> yeah, no, nah, man, I, no love lost at all, as you can see. Fair no enough. Yeah, I don't like George Carl to this day. Oh, no, I threatened his life and everything. I threatened his well-being. <laughs> like, I told him, man, you lucky free well choke for P.J. Carlis. Because <laughs> had, had that never happened, I would have beat George Carl up that day. Not choked him, I would have beat him up. Well, f- George Carl for first and foremost. <laughs> Kenyon Martin was a former number one overall pick, an NBA All-Star who helped the Nets team make two straight NBA final appearances in 2002 and 2003. He was an explosive athlete who played an in-your-face game in the face! In the face! and never backed down from anyone on the court during his 15-year career. In a recent interview by the team at FanDuel TV, they asked him why the Nuggets suspended him in the 2006 playoffs. And Kenyon Martin didn't hold back ripping in to then Nuggets coach George Carl. In this video we'll find out the real reason why Martin was suspended and we also find out why other players hated playing for George Carl. We hear from the glove Gary Payton and J.R. Smith. Let's get started. You were suspended in 06 for conduct detrimental to the team. <laughs> let's uh, let's go through that. What happened and how's your relationship with George Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can I, am I allowed to speak freely no, on here? Absolutely. Please do. This is your safe zone. Well, well <laughs> George Carl, for, first and foremost. <laughs> I know it's early in the morning, seven o'clock, but hey, that's just the set. That's the, that, that's just the way I feel about George Carl. Um, I'm sweating. Uh, yes. two, yeah, no, nah, I mean, I, no love lost at all, as you can see. Fair no enough. Yeah, no, what happened was we were, I was, everybody knew I was going through knee problems in Denver. Uh, I had two micro fracture surgeries, I had my patella repaired in Denver. And I was having knee problems before the playoffs. Came up with an agreement, I was gonna sit out a few games and get ready for the playoffs. George started Francisco Elson in my spot. Um, last few games, go to him before the playoffs. I'm ready to rock, I'm ready to start. He said he's gonna start Francisco, he wanna reward him. Who the f wanna reward an NBA player? Um, <laughs> And so we lose game one against the Clippers. We go game two. I tell them we lost game one. Back in the starting lineup. Uh, I'm going to start Francisco again. Now, you, now you're messing with me. Now you're playing with me. <laughs> so we start the game. I played seven minutes in the first half. Like three minutes. Yeah, maybe seven game minutes. And we was down at half. So towards the end of the second quarter, he put... Greg Buckner in for Eddie Naira. Me and Eddie play the same position. So I'm like, time going. I'm like, what is three minutes, two minutes, a minute hit? I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going back in. So by this time, I'm steaming. Like, if they could have did the old school cartoon illustration on me with the smoke coming out my ears and my nose and my face beat red, that that would have been what they had on me on the bench in that moment. So I was the first person off the bench, I'm going to the locker room, Uh-oh. The team come in, and tell them how the, how the coaches meet in the hallway in L.A. before mm-hmm. they come in the locker room. I go right in the hallway while they're in there talking. I go, <laughs> I step in between the coaches and I let George in. Oh, I no. Threaten his, oh, no, I threatened his life and everything. I threatened his well-being. <laughs> like, I told him, man, you lucky it's free well choke for P.J. Carlissa. Because had, had that never happened, I would have beat George Carl up that day. Not choked him, I would have beat him up. Like, no question uh, about it. it would, uh, that would my NBA career that day would have been. Had P.J. Carlissa more never got choked. Wow. <laughs> All right, like, I, then, I yes. can see that. I can so see now why I got so suspended. George wanted the team to suspend me. The team told George, you need to do it. Oh. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't. Of course he did. They had to, uh, <laughs> word got back to, yeah, yeah that I was for the rest of the playoffs. He, but, he couldn't even put you on it? Uh, I man, listen, man, at that moment. <laughs> he's not going to put Yeah, he's not. I, I don't no. know how to watch either. Oh, no. In that moment, it took a whole summer for me to be able to sit down in front of him. And before the next and before the next season, we had a sit down, and we came. I, he didn't have much to say. I told him, "You coach your team. You don't you don't say nothing to me about me to me, and Perfect. we gonna be all right. The first time you do, I'm on your ass. <laughs> so, oh no, George can say nothing to me. Like he couldn't. He he coached his team. He didn't have anything to say to me. 
and, the, and it's unfortunate that I was I wasn't able to get out of there. <laughs> um, but they used it, and they knew that they didn't have to worry about me doing my job. So I'm going to show up and play no matter what, no matter what my feelings are towards teammates, coaching staff, management, no matter what. I'm going to show up and do my job. And and they knew that. So that was the... No, that was the thing, but, yeah, I don't like George Carl to this day. And, <laughs> like, and I... We need a T-shirt. Yeah, right? I'm glad I asked. Uh, sorry, Shams, <laughs> I didn't mean to take over your question. Go ahead. Oh, no, you didn't know. No, uh, everybody knew it. And any Can't chance I get to put George on the burner, on the grill, <laughs> and put his ass on the grill every single time. I was at home minding my business when he wrote that book, so. <laughs> thank and then that's when they brought George Carl in, and George Carl brought um, Coach Gerger in. Gerg is the man. Like, people don't, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like Gerg gravitate yeah. towards guys like yourself and myself. Like, right. like that time in Denver, like, Gerg kept me sane. <laughs> he will do that. He will like, keep me sane. He will. He kept he kept me sane, man. He kept me off the ledge. Like I was on the ledge. He kept me from jumping, so to speak. Right. Right. <laughs> like right. so. Right. And, so and I believe Gerg, that. Gerg did Gerg he he saved me a whole lot of money in Denver. Like That's he right. saved my career in, in definitely, man. So And he and he did the same thing yeah. with me, Kenya, yeah. because I used to want to kill George ass every every yeah. fucking day, but I wanted to beat his head in, you know what I'm yeah. saying? When I got to Denver and started dealing with George, it was just like, oh my God, like, no, like, I can't keep, like, if this is what the NBA coaching is like, like, bro, how, like, how are y'all considered, like, great, quote unquote, coaches if you, like, if y'all act like this? And it's like, to me, there's no worse feeling if you feel like the head of the game is throwing salt in the game. Like if you got everybody else playing hard and trying to like trying to do certain things and you literally throwing salt in the game, like trying to mess with players' heads so they don't even like mesh together, it's like what do you like why? Like I don't I never understood that. Like if I come to you and tell you something about him and then go to you and tell you something about him and then just watch and see what happens. Mm. It's like mm. and it didn't even have to be true. It literally did not have to be true. Oh, Melo just said he, he shoots too much. You shoot too much. Oh, JR says you don't play defense. I'm sitting there looking like, yo, bro, did you say that? He's like, nah. He's like, yo, did you say this? I'm like, no. He's like, okay. Now, George, he can catch all the straights. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to relitigate it if you don't want to. But like, he's, he's taken a lot of shots at you since then, since that time he did in the book and everything like that. Uh, I mean, he, I think, honestly, I think he lives to take shots for at, at people now. And it's like, at, at, like, dude, at what point do you, like, even, do you not think you made any mistakes? Like, seriously, we didn't have one out of bounds play my whole time playing for this man. If you go back to that Lakers series, we lose, we lose on three out of bounds plays. Trevor Reza steals all of them, and we lose. It's like, how do you can like? I don't know. You got Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, and Della Shrimp, and all these dudes, and like you, you've had crews. How could you be can labeled a great coach just because you won in the regular season? You can win games if you coach long enough. You're gonna win games if you got the right talent. Besides the incident that Kenya Martin just talked about, there's probably plenty of other reasons why Martin loves to go after George Carl these days. Maybe it could be this as well. A direct quote from George Carl in his own book talking about his time coaching the Denver Nuggets. Kenyon and Camalo carry two big burdens. All that money and no father to show them how to act like a man. You just made the list! Yeah, I think that would have made Kenyon's list as well. Alright guys, what do you think about this story of Kenya Martin going after George Carl? Let me know your thoughts, leave a comment down below. Alright guys, that will wrap it up for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, that really helps this video out. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. You don't say nothing to me, about me, to me, and we're going to be all right.